The past affects the present even without our being aware of it. Francine Shapiro. You're listening to Parenting in the Rain podcast, episode 48. Welcome to Parenting in the Rain Insights from the Experts podcast, providing parents all around the world with valuable knowledge to help with the biggies of family life. Here's your host, a registered play therapist, education specialist, parent coach, and my mom, Jackie Flynn. Hi there, Jackie Flynn here. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Parenting in the Rain podcast. Well, we are just a couple of episodes away from transitioning over to Play Therapy Community Podcast, and I'm super excited. I have loved this 50 episodes with you. We have over 100,000 downloads. People have downloaded Parenting in the Rain all over the world, and I love connecting with you. So if you haven't done so yet, join that Facebook group, the free Facebook group. It's really good. And we have a new one for the playtherapycommunity.com, so hop in that one as well. I'm pretty sure you'll like that one if you like this one. So I'm wondering how you're doing. I hope wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you're having a great day. Today, we are going to delve into something that I feel really passionate about. It's a type of therapy that I use pretty much with every client, and I still remember the day that I realized that I was able to go get training for this type of therapy. The the training is pretty expensive, and um, I felt so grateful that I was able to do it, and um, and now I'm practicing it for years, and I have seen such profound change with all of the clients that I've used it with especially with children, as we're talking about today. It is called EMDR therapy, and it, we're really delving into how to help children move past the tough stuff. But I want you to keep in mind that this type of therapy is not just for children. It works with pretty much all ages. EMDR also known as eye movement desensitization and reprocessing therapy, is an effective research and evidence-based therapy that helps free people from painful memories, from anxiety, intrusive thoughts, those racing thoughts, and other disturbances from exposure to trauma and especially disturbing situations that kind of leave people feeling stuck. And EMDR works with kids, too. It works really well with kids. In my experience, um, it also often takes like less time to notice the change because kids have less in their memory network, being that they have those less tough memories due to their young age often, not always, though, um, as compared to the older clients. So when exposed to traumatic events, our minds may not fully understand or even be able to process the magnitude of the situation due to what had happened and just how overwhelming it is. Now, that word trauma throws some people for a loop. Some people think trauma and they think, well, no, I've never been in a car accident or uh, a war situation, but trauma isn't limited to those. Trauma is really has a much broader meaning. It's something that really kind of rocks our world and leaves things kind of shaken up. And it certainly can be a wartime scenario and it can be um, a car accident, but it can be much more. We're going to think of it in terms of like big T trauma, like the capital T for the big stuff, such as the car crash, the witnessing of violent crime or being a victim of a violent crime, maybe um, in a domestic violence home, uh, divorce, things of that nature can be a big T trauma. Now, the little T traumas, like the lowercase t, um, that could be something smaller, but the little T's can be just as painful many times. So the, what's a little T trauma for one person may be a big T for another person. It just really depends on their ability to um, handle certain situations and where they came from and what their tolerance levels are. So that could be being called a name by a peer or um, having to move from another state to um, change schools, something of that nature. And that lack of processing of traumatic events because 
uh, our our brain tends to hold on to the big stuff. If we don't process them thoroughly, they can really show themselves in some really hard ways, some de debilitating like psychological and emotional states of distress. Now with kids, it can look very different than it does with adults. It can look like night terrors, bedwetting, behavior outbursts, anxiety, depression, and things like that. This state of distress can result in a feeling of just being emotionally stuck. And it can be so confusing to parents and teachers and caregivers because they just see the behavior and it doesn't really seem like it links to something directly. So that's where this type of therapy really helps because we don't have to have the answers. We just need to do the process. In fact, sometimes in this type of therapy, there are things that people don't want to disclose the information, whether it's like something that they feel guilty about or they feel very shameful about. A lot of clients that have experienced sexual abuse um, they don't want to say the details, and through this type of therapy, you don't have to. Um, you just bring those thoughts to mind and let your memory network go where it needs to go while um, both sides of your brain is being stimulated. It sounds much more complicated than what it is. It's one of those things that experiencing it is profound. Understanding it before you've experienced it can get a little bit confusing. So EMDR it can really help with symptoms of distress. Um, that, you know, some disorders or some situations are distressful in themselves. So ADHD, for example, that could be hard to be the person with ADHD because you're constantly getting redirected if you're a child or that feeling of, gosh, I can't do anything right. It can really leave you feel, feeling let down. Or that impulsivity could lead um, to maybe social issues, so feelings of rejection. It can also be difficult to be a family member, a parent or a sibling of someone that has um, ADHD. So those feelings um, and the self-perception, whether you're the family member or the person that's struggling with it firsthand, can be reprocessed through EMDR therapy. I was surprised to know that it helps with restless set leg syndrome, phantom leg syndrome, um, OCD, or I guess that's phantom limb syndrome, sorry about that, the uh, obsessive compulsive disorders, eating disorders, that's definitely my therapy treatment of choice with my clients with eating disorders, and it really works. There's different protocols through this, and the feeling state protocol is what really um, I've noticed that's helped. There's probably different ways to do it. PTSD, many of my clients come to me because I provide EMDR therapist, or therapy and they um, are experiencing PTSD. And that's one of the disorders that this type of therapy is heavily researched on. And um, they especially love to use it with people that are struggling with PTSD after transitioning back from being um, overseas in combat. It helps with anxiety and depression. It can help with Tourette syndrome um, and, and the effects of it. I know that the Tourette syndrome and anxiety can really kind of elevate it, but also there's some self-cognitions with all of these too, something that people may feel um, different or feel judged. So uh, the MDR really helps desensitize that. With kids, one of the things that can be caused by the big T or the little T trauma is bedwetting. And when you reprocess it, these symptoms go away. It's really pretty neat. Uh, emotional regulation issues, just that, that emotional outburst that can leave your hair standing on end at the end of the day if you're a parent. And if you're a kid or a sibling, it can be just as exhausting. So those behavior concerns. Also, autism spectrum disorders. It's hard to... Um, parent in those situations, but it's really hard to be the one often that um, has autism spectrum disorder. So that can really help as well. And know that this type of therapy doesn't rely on description or words. So it can really help with people that are limited in their verbal um, communication as well. And um, dissociative disorder 
or identity disorder. I've had a few clients with DID, and it's pretty amazing. A lot of people, not all of them, but a lot of people that have DID have some really tough past, and it their body kind of split off into different parts. A long time ago, it used to be called multiple personality disorder, but when their body splits off into different parts, it's just a way of their body trying to protect them and save them and be there for them. So uh, they're really survivors. That, to me, is amazing. I think our bodies are incredible. And um, just the, the human spirit and perseverance is amazing. Through MDR therapy, it basically stimulates the mind into reprocessing events. It facilitates resolve from within the person experiencing it. And it lessens the emotional impact of the memories. So even if the memories are from before the person can remember their thoughts, we call it precognitive or preverbal, um, we actually have memories from up to six months in utero and Sometimes they can stay stuck if they're distressing memories as emotional memories and they can be stored in the limbic system part of our brain and that's when it can get really confusing because you think, gosh, this kid is misbehaving but they have had the best life. They were um, adopted at birth and they have the best parents and I don't know why this is happening. Um, so many things can happen just during the development piece or that um, the birth process or the separation process. So we don't really have to know all of those to provide effective therapy. We just have to be able to be present with the child and with children it really helps to integrate um, with play therapy. And I'm a play therapist so I absolutely love integrating these two types of therapies with kids because you can really see a big shift pretty quickly when you bring these two together. Some kids though aren't really tolerant of the bilateral stimulation as much as I would like. Um, if someone has sensory processing disorder um, and, and not, not all kids certainly but um, just feeling irritated um, they may not, because there's so many different ways to do the bilateral stimulation, and when I say that, it's really just um, speaking to how you activate both sides of the brain. So it may look like um, moving finger puppets back and forth while they think of, of the distress, an image that goes with the distress and event and the thought that they have by themselves, uh, about themselves. Or it may look like tapping on their shoulders or holding the buzzers. There's different ways to do it. But some kids, you know, they don't want you to tap on their shoulders. So sometimes you can get them to do high fives, but they don't want to sustain it. So as a therapist, it does create a challenge in some situations, but not all. But if it were easy, everybody would be doing it, right? So um, just because it's challenging doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Um it can really make a difference, even in those tough situations. So with those memories that feel like emotionally stuck, they can really have an impact on development because our kids are developing. And when they're in those formative years, um, the trauma, the effects of the trauma, can it can limit them. It can... Um, and I know when they do brain scans and they see people that have PTSD, their brain actually looks different. Their hippocampus is um, a different size or it lights up in the scan different areas. So with kids, um, if they haven't processed through that trauma, it can look like lack of focus. It can look like fidgeting. It can look like anxiety. It can look like depression, which all can affect so many areas, their relationships, um, whether it's with their family or their friends, their home life, their ability to play and connect with others, uh, um, their focus in school. And often, unfortunately, I don't want to say often because I don't know that for sure, but sometimes is a better word. It can, um, it can really be uh, misdiagnosed as ADHD because it's hard to focus and it's really hard to um, stay on one task, kind of get um, those impulsive behaviors going and um, those explosive behaviors, and it can be misdiagnosed sometimes. So I think it's really important to 
have someone that really understands trauma, especially if you're aware of your child's history. Um, you know, some people aren't if they're in adopted situations um, or, you know, just helping out a family member. They may not know what all went on, but um, if there's any trauma that you even suspect, it's important to really find someone that can look at it through that lens as well as the ADHD lens. And that way, whatever um, is determined, the treatment can help it. And it's not just um, kind of throwing something, throwing glue at something and hope it sticks. I don't know where I came up with that crazy uh, analogy. I don't know why you would think that glue would stick to something. <laughs> That's just crazy. Okay, so EMDR, it's a therapeutic tool, and I do think of it as a tool. I think of it as one of my most valuable tools that can be used with the um, clients to overcome those barriers to normal functioning. And I use that word normal very, very loosely because one person's normal is definitely not another person's normal, but really helps them to achieve their level of happiness because we want a good quality of life for our kids, for ourselves, for our friends, for the community, for the world. So we want to work through this stuff and not feel like we're carrying around a big backpack full of heavy rocks all the time, just trying to get through the day, trying to endure life rather than enjoy it. Because life is meant to be enjoyed. I love using EMDR with kids. So EMDR has really been shown to alleviate anxiety and depression and I've seen it a lot in my work with kids you know using the EMDR and you know, the play therapy together and mindfulness mindfulness is a big piece especially with kids that are struggling with the effects of ADHD but I don't want to um, forget to really kind of speak to the impact that these tough situations have on parents and caregivers. And I already talked about that for a little bit. But know that if your situation is really tough and you have like a tough upbringing yourself, um, and now you're in a really difficult parenting situation that sometimes can really strain those marital or couples relationships, that sometimes it may be really helpful for you to seek out EMDR therapy to work through all this so you could be as present and as helpful as um, you possibly can. I love that metaphor of when you get on a plane, the flight attendant says, put on your oxygen mask before you put it on your child. Now, we all think, well, of course, because you have to have that oxygen or you're not going to be there for your child. Well, think of it in those terms. If you don't take care of yourself, what good are you going to be to your child and your family? So know when enough is enough and you need to go work through some of that stuff. All right, so I won't lecture you on that, um, but that is that is a biggie. I can see profound changes when um, parents do their own healing because then their 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 tolerance levels are um, higher their ability to connect with their kids are more many of my clients I have a lot of teen clients but I also have a lot of younger clients and then I have several adults things are going really well lately my practice is growing I'm excited but <clears throat> that's why I haven't um, done an episode in a while because one thing we got sick for a little bit the whole family which has been going around but also I've been growing my practice and I've added two clinicians and I love 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 it but it does take some time many of my clients so especially the teenage ones um and, and, and I've seen it more so in females. I have to look at the research on that. They engage in self-harm, like cutting or skin picking, um, things of that nature. And EMDR is one of my go-to tools to help them. Uh, it can be performed in different ways, but with teens, I really love to use it with art therapy because that really um, 
we, we can go to a deeper level. And that level of development seems to really work. With younger kids, like I said, I, I integrate it with play therapy. It may look like one thing with one client and something totally different with another client because I really attune to my clients and meet them where they're at and see what can best help them. And it's kind of interesting how I'll be with a client and you definitely... You have like a, maybe like some ideas, but you never go into the session with a solid plan because you want the client to go where they need to go rather than following like some sort of lesson plan like a teacher. But somehow, some way, um, it just it we just end up doing what needs to be done. So for one client, it may be using the sand tray. Another client, it may be um, playing with the superheroes and watching them go back and forth and allowing that desensitization um, process to happen and integrating those positive thoughts. And for an onlooker, it looks just like play in many cases. It's just the coolest stuff. I I really do have the coolest job I love. <laughs> now it's not like I'm bragging. Okay, so with younger kids, um, sometimes they may not be able to bring up that negative thought about themselves, like I'm defective or, or I'm a bad person. But they can really notice what they feel in their body. And that helping them really recognize where those feelings manifest themselves in their body is a really good way to help them control those feelings so usually like anxiety will show up like either in your throat or like your upper part of your chest and then it'll sometimes people will grit their teeth everybody feels a little bit differently but depression kind of feels heavy all over your body um, that kind of awareness can help people shift too and it's really good if we help our kids when they're young like that because they can really kind of make it a habit to notice what they're feeling when these intense feelings come up. And the moment you become the observer and you notice where those are in your body, then they lose their grip on you, which is cool because then you're in control of your emotions more than your emotions being in control of you. Oh, and I forgot to mention one other type of bilateral stimulation. And there's so many different ways. You can do it with a flashlight and everything, but that would be the visual as they walk or watch it go back and forth. But sometimes kids or um, adults, anybody, um, may choose to wear headphones that beep alternating in either ear and that can really help that processing as well sometimes with teenagers i have a couple of different machines but my preference is to really kind of be one-on-one -on -one. the research shows that if they call it wagging your fingers back and forth and um, the person looks at your fingers as they think of an image and a and a thought about themselves that one seems to be the most effective but sometimes, you know, if somebody has eye issues um, and they can't track or they just can't focus if you're in front of them moving your finger back and forth, <laughs> um, we use the machines and they work great too. All right, so remember those big T's and the little T traumas. Uh, and one big T can be a little T for another and vice versa. So divorce, car accidents, fights, um, Usually when people come to me, they have the big T's. I usually get some really um, big situations, not always, but it can become painfully fragmented into other events res resulting in like limited enjoyment of life activities. So in, in say if somebody has a big T of um, a violent event, they may not want to be in an area with a lot of people. So with kids, it may look like social anxiety or it may look like separation anxiety. It may look like um, anger, depression. Um, for adults, teens, sometimes that chemical dependency, impulsive disorders, it can manifest itself in eating disorders. Eating disorders are tough because there's like a, a paradox where the person wants to heal, but they don't really want to recover because the recovery kind of takes them back to where they don't want to be but the eating disorder um the protocol that i use with that the feeling state seems to really help also dialectical behavioral therapy can help with that as well um 
relationship issues, definitely. I have integrated, I'm also a therapist that uses Gottman Method Couples Therapy in my practice, and I love it. Oh my goodness, it's the best. So I'm proud to say that I am a great marriage counselor at this time because I have the best training, the Gottman Therapy. But I've used the EMDR when in session, and it's definitely not appropriate in every session. But I have used the EMDR therapy while in a marriage counseling session and have noticed a profound shift. So it's one of those things where you really got to kind of get the feel for if it's the right situation because um, couples counseling can be so very different because you have two different people that are often in conflict. Um, so the timing has to be right after a lot of healing's been done and understanding and empathy and things of that nature. So through that brain stimulation of EMDR therapy, and remember it's just, just like kind of moving your eyes back and forth or tapping on your shoulders or listening to the earphones alternate, clients, they reprocess those traumatic events and negative thoughts, and eventually they become desensitized. Um, sometimes they are totally desensitized from the emotional charge connected, and sometimes not totally, but it's less. Um, from those painful memories that are often at the root of the emotional troubles. Have you ever met somebody that they were married, they had a bad situation, they got divorced, and when they found somebody else, they picked out someone that's like the same person except for in a different body. They repeated the same um, patterns in their relationship. And that's, there's, there's you know, there, there's some unresolved issues there um, that haven't been healed. So definitely I recommend if someone is going through a divorce that you, you seek out the MDR therapy to really reprocess that and start off healthy and fresh. Not that you want to jump right back into another relationship. I don't think that's a good idea in many cases, but um, so the fact that, hey, I'm healthy. I'm, I'm not carrying around all of this stuff from my last relationship. Okay, so I don't know. Have you ever used the Audible app to read books? My sister told me about this, and I've been using it for a while now, and I love it because I've gotten so busy where it's hard to just sit down and read books, um, maybe just like a page or two or when I'm searching for information. Um, but I really you know, don't have time to read a book cover to cover, and time is really an illusion. Of course, if it was a priority, I would make the time. But through this Audible app, I can listen to it in the car, and I love it, and I love it, love it, love it, just like a love podcast. Um, the audiobooks are incredible, um, but I got Francine Shapiro. She's the creator of EMDR Therapy. I got her book, Getting Past Your Past. And I have read it. When I say read it, I mean I have listened to it five times. And I could practically predict what they're going to say next. I remember um, when I was a teenager, we did that with a couple movies like Dirty Dancing or something. We could recite and sing all the songs. That's kind of how I'm feeling with these books. Um, I love Francine Shapiro's book, so I have a link to that in the show notes if you want to get that Getting Past Your Past um, also on the Audible app. Oh, I have the book, um, The Body Keeps the Score by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. Wow, that book is so, so good. I read that one. I listened to that one three times. And Peter Levine, anything that he does is good, too. He really works with somatic experiencing. So I use all of that through my work. I'm a little bit of a nerd. Whereas my books, or of course, that's what my daughter tells me, my books are all kind of like therapy and self-help and growth related and business related. I really don't have any like pleasure books. So I might, I don't know, I'm really enjoying the, the uh, learning books at this time, but I might look into reading something for fun. Although these books are kind of fun to me too. <laughs> all right. Remember that quote I had said, I don't know if you've listened to my previous podcast, but in an addiction class um, when I was in graduate school, I heard a quote, hurt people hurt people. So that quote really stuck with me. Um, we want to free our 
kids from the pain that they're going through. We want to free ourselves so that we don't continue this pattern of pain or discomfort or um, have it manifest itself into relationship issues that sometimes look like emotional abuse and sometimes like physical abuse. So hopefully during this episode you learned a little bit about EMDR therapy. It is kind of complicated to understand that eye movement desensitization reprocessing, um, but when you experience it, it's it's real easy to understand, and it's um, even not so much as understanding, but feeling the healing and the effects from it. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode. And we have a couple of more episodes until we transition over to Play Therapy Community, which I'm so excited about. If you want to visit that website, it's at www.playtherapycommunity.com. I created the website myself. I was so proud. (laughs) I remember way back in my early years of college, I used to think that I wanted to be a, um, a programmer. And I got in the minor um, in business, had a business minor, and I took some um, coding classes and some web design and things of that nature. Long story short, it felt like torture to me. I did not like the coding. It was really difficult. I had to get a tutor. But I love the counseling stuff, so it was pretty cool that I got to experience that other end of it. But I do love designing websites and stuff. Just a little unrelated fact. So I designed that website. I found um, a a theme that is fairly simple to use and and artsy looking. (laughs) All right. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review um, our podcast on iTunes if you're an iTunes listener. And join our Facebook groups. We have Parenting in the Rain Community, and we have Play Therapy Community Facebook group. All right, thanks for listening. Take care.